I grew up south of the Mason-Dixon line, so few cookbooks shaped the way I think about food more than Edna Lewis's The Taste of Country Cooking. Now, some of Edna Lewis's dishes, well, they were popular all over the South, such as chicken and pastry. And Brian's here to tell us more about that dish. That's right. I actually traveled down to Alabama, to a little town about 30 miles outside of Montgomery called Grady, Alabama. And I visited a restaurant called Red's Little Schoolhouse. It was actually a little one-room schoolhouse from 1910 to 1960. It's got all the same kind of character as it did <laughs> in 1910. Wide pine floors, checkered tablecloths, all the way down to the chalkboard menu. And this is where I first had chicken and pastry. You're familiar with chicken and dumplings mm -hmm. and chicken and slicks. Well, this is kind of in between. These are puffy, delicate noodles, I guess you would mm -hmm. say. Fat noodles. Fat noodles. We're going to start off by making the pastry. I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour here. And to that, we're going to add two teaspoons of baking powder. You did say they're going to be puffy. That's going to be the culprit right there. <laughs> half teaspoon of salt. And this dish has a little bit of a kick of black pepper. So we're going to add a half teaspoon to our pastry. OK. Then we're going to combine two tablespoons of melted butter with half a cup of milk. we we'll just mix that up. And we're just going to add that to our flour mixture and just stir it until it comes together. It's a very rustic, homey dish. It's one of those dishes in the test kitchen where after we've been eating all day long, this is the one thing that cooks still crave. You know? Yes, I know. I have stood in line <laughs> trying to get leftover chicken and pastry. Okay, so you see the dough is just starting to come together. And we can turn it out onto a lightly floured counter and just give it a couple of turns until it comes together into a cohesive ball. We want it to have enough structure to roll out to a nice thin eighth of an inch sheet, but thanks to that baking powder, it's gonna cook up nice and fluffy. So if we try to roll it out right now, there's so much gluten developed that it would spring back on us. So we wanna give this dough a little chance to rest. Okay. So we'll set it aside and cover it. You could do this up to a day in advance if you'd like. Now we can talk about chicken. We've got bone-in chicken thighs. So we want to start off by patting the chicken dry, and then we're just going to season it with pepper. But the thing I like about dark meat chicken is that they hold up really well to a long simmer. There's a lot of nice fat and connective tissue that'll give the stew some body and extra yep. flavor. Okay, we have a tablespoon of butter. We're melting over medium high heat. We're just going to go ahead and add the chicken, skin side down, and we're going to let that go until it's nicely browned to both sides. And that's about five minutes per side. Okay, Bridget, it's been 10 minutes. You can see that we've got the chicken nicely browned on both sides. You see all that fawn that's developed, all that browning on that skin? Yes. That's going to equal a lot of flavor in the stew. I love it. So now we're going to add four cups of chicken broth, one cup of water, and one half rib of celery, and one halved onion. So we're just going to bring this up to a boil, put a lid on it, reduce the heat to low, and let it go for about 25 minutes until that chicken is nice and tender and that broth is really fortified with chickeny flavor. Sounds great. It's been 25 minutes and that chicken is just cooked through. You can smell how chickeny that broth yes, is. It's pure chicken. So now we can cut the heat on it. And first we can discard the onion and the celery because they've done their part. They've given us all they've got. And we can transfer the chicken to a plate. Oh, the flavor it gives off. It's all yeah. about the broth, really. Absolutely. Yep. We'll let that chicken cool down for a few minutes. And now we can turn our attention to the pastry. All right. We're going to roll this pastry out into a perfect 12 inch square. So I like to put pressure from the middle of the dough out and rotate the dough. Start in the middle, start pressing down, and push it up, and come back and put pressure on the middle and push down. Every now and then I'll just come back with a bench scraper and square it up a little bit. All right. We're going to cut the pastry into little diamonds. And this is something we learned from the Edna Lewis book. Diamonds tend to taste better. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna mark this dough at one inch intervals and use my ruler as a guide. And I like to use a pizza cutter for this because it's nice and easy and goes pretty quickly. And it's less likely to scratch up your counter or your cutting board. So we're gonna turn the ruler about 45 degrees and we'll space them about one inch apart. So of course the edge pieces aren't going to be perfect diamonds. Those are beautiful. Thanks, Bridget. I'm impressed. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little flour down and scrape them up. Okay, we brought that broth back to a boil, and we can go ahead and add the pastry now. Give it a little stir to distribute the pastry nice and evenly. You can see they've already begun to start puffing up a little bit. Sure have. It's only going to get better from there. We're going to put a lid on this and reduce the heat to low and let that go for 15 minutes to cook that pastry all the way through. All right. While that's going on, we can come over here and shred our chicken. Take the skin off and discard it. And then we're just going to peel the chicken off the bone All right. and shred it into bite-sized pieces. All 
right, Bridget, it's been 15 minutes, and you can see that that pastry is nice and puffed. We're just going to stir our shredded chicken in there to heat through, and during that time, the stew will thicken up just a touch. Okay, Bridget, the chicken is heated through for just a minute or so. I'm gonna taste it for seasoning. I'm gonna add a touch of black pepper, a little pinch of salt, stir that in. And we're ready to eat. That is it. That's it. No garnish. The garnish is the diamond. I don't know how, much, <laughs> how many times we have to go over the it's diamond so shape. True. It's so true. <laughs> well, I love dishes like this. It's just, it is what it is. It's chicken and pastry. That's what you said. That's what you called it. And that's what's in the bowls. Mm, super chickeny, huh? And you get a little bit of that onion and the celery. Like it tastes like a broth that you spent all day making, right. but it really came together quickly. And the pastry, I just have to say the pastry's everything. Yeah. This thing will feed your belly and feed your soul. And it starts with browning chicken on the stove top. Then simmer the chicken with onion, celery, and some broth. Set that aside to shred a little bit later on, then make a quick dough by stirring milk and butter into a mix of flour and baking powder. Then roll out and cut into fancy diamonds. Now simmer the pastry until tender, add the shredded chicken back to the pot, and you have a huge, satisfying dinner. So from Cook's Country, a soul warming and belly filling chicken and pastry. And you can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with tastings, testings, and select episodes on our website. That's cookscountry.com backslash diamond. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>